yeah. It's on. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my God. Good night. Look at that tank. That's a toad, brother. And so I have a question. How is toad trips coming along? You doing? How are you doing on those right now? Dude, it was literally trending number one on Realtree 365 the other day. There's Most of the episodes are already on there. Like, I got to admit, one of my lifetime goals was to be on the same channel as Michael Waddell because I love his his um, show, The Bone Collector. Right. And I've been a fan since I was a kid. But the other day, on Realtree 365, uh, Toe Trips was number one and Bone Collector was number two. And I was like... Wow. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah, it's doing well, man. It's doing well. So if you guys haven't done so yet, go check out the Realtree 365 app, some of the best outdoor content in the game. It's the exclusive host of the Toe Trip series with yours truly. Uh, we did release one episode of the Toe Trips, which is the 10 episode that we release every year on the YouTube channel. So please go go check that video out if you haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, for those of you knuckleheads that are watching from the YouTube channel, uh, welcome back to live streams. So we've gone off and we've played with this concept off platform. Uh, Randy has done a, a fantastic job of helping us dial it in. But you are literally watching the first episode of the Chad Hoover Fishing Podcast. You know, I tried to come up with some clever names. I had one like the Real Patriot, you know, R E E L. Uh, I did one that was like another one more cast with the word pod in front of it. So it was like the one more podcast or. I really just figured out that most of the good, clever names have been taken. Uh, Luther Cyphers from Yak Attack was like, man, you don't meet Chad. You experience Chad. <laughs> so he's like, dude, you should call it the Chad Hoover experience. And I was like, dude, that sounds good. And then the reason that it sounded good was because there's the Joe Rogan experience. experience. And you can't name yourself after the number one podcast in the freaking right. universe. <laughs> so the Chad Hoover fishing show podcast, whatever you want to call it. It's just what I'm going to call it. It matches the channel. It matches the social platform. It is what I do. You're going to get some Chad Hoover. You're going to get some fishing. But more importantly, we're going to focus on the sport. Right. And we're going to get away from just doing tournament coverage. Because that's really what we've done, kind of learning the ropes and cutting our teeth. When I say we, I'm talking about Randy and I and our guests, is that we've, it's mostly been about tournament stuff. And so right. tonight's show is going to be about the future of kayak fishing how we're going to make a fundamental shift in what we promote as KBF, not just the business, but as the community and how we hope to steer the community in another direction. Um, not a major shift, not a turn the steering wheel and run off in the ditch, but just some subtle changes to some things that I think are missing from what even I really love about kayak fishing. Uh, I got out on the road this year. I'll talk about the foundation for some of these ideas and when they became you know how how my travels this year really made them come to fruition but yeah guys this is the podcast you guys have been asking for it for years uh we're gonna figure out how to get it on all the podcast platforms and all that kind of stuff um in many cases it's been unpredictable because my schedule's been unpredictable so randy will text me hey you doing a show tomorrow i'm like no man sorry i'm in you know bismarck north dakota no cell phone signal no wi-fi signal so what we're going to do now is we're going to schedule it. And if I have to be on the road or Randy's got, you know, a kid's thing or whatever, we'll just record multiple episodes in a week and then release them on a weekly basis. So right. my commitment to you is we're going to do this weekly. Most of the time on the Chad Hoover Fishing YouTube channel, it's going to release Tuesday nights, 6 o'clock Eastern, seven or 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern. Right. Um, and then if we record it, we can release it pretty much any time. But most of the time I'm going to try to stay in that time slot so randy man a lot of changes in my life bro lots of changes lots of good stuff happening lots of getting my mind right but more importantly i really think i found bass heaven i i, I almost sound like a parent with a new kid hey look at this picture of my new kid <laughs> but huntsville alabama is how i didn't figure this out sooner is centrally located between the places that I go to most. And so when I started looking at the city that I passed through the most over the last 10 years living in Tennessee, I was constantly going through Huntsville. Right. I would go to Huntsville to get to Decatur. 
I'd go to Huntsville to get to Gunnersville. I'd go to Huntsville to get to, you know, the Gulf. I'd go to Huntsville to get to Hoover or Birmingham or all these other places that I hunt and fish and do outdoor redneckery in Alabama. And it just basically it was a combination of it was the perfect place for me. Christy saw it as a business opportunity, reached out to the city of Huntsville. We were able to come to terms on bringing the headquarters here. So for now, this is the KBF headquarters. This is my new grand designs headquarters slash bunkhouse slash house slash, you know, place to stay when I'm in Alabama. I'm actually here more than I'm home now because this has practically become home, but I got everything I need. I'm 150 yards from the Tennessee River. I've got four other rivers within 30 minutes, two within 10 minutes. Uh, fantastic bass fishing right here. And I'm centrally located amongst some of the best bass fishing in the country, closer to the coast, closer to some of the rivers that I fish in Tennessee, closer to Chickamauga, mm -hmm. closer to Watts Bar and Nickajack, and a lot of those places, even in East Tennessee that I fish. Basically, the Tennessee River goes from Paducah, Kentucky, over to Knoxville, Tennessee, from Knoxville, Tennessee to Paducah, Kentucky, and I'm right in the middle. So it's it's perfect. Um, speaking of perfect. Huntsville, probably... Huntsville, Alabama is centrally located, and it has it's the number one growing city in America right now. Actually, they, by Homes and U.S. Report or whatever the heck is the sanctioning body for that, they determined it was the number one city for all things, recreation, right. median home price, employability, things to do, blah, blah, blah. But but let me tell you a couple of other reasons while I dote on this city, right, before I go any further. The other reason that it's so cool to me is, one, I retired from the military, but by living where I lived outside of Nashville, I didn't have very close access to a base. Right. And so I wasn't really able to take advantage of the benefit of being retired by being able to go to some of the facilities, by being able to go to the commissary, by being able to do some of those things. I am three miles from Redstone Arsenal, which is a yeah. giant army base. I am a aviation nut. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I have over 2000 hours of flight time. Uh, I was a crew chief in helicopters. I was a rescue swimmer in helicopters. I then became a pilot and got NPQ'd, which stands for not physically qualified to fly because of these teeth right here. And I'm just an aviation enthusiast. I love aviation. You're so I'm in the home. rocket city, bro. Yeah. Like you don't get much more aviation than things that fly and things that go to space. So I get to see helicopters again. I get to hear that blop, 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 blop. And I tell people all the time, you hear that? You hear that? And they're like, yeah, what's that? And I go, that's the sound of freedom. <laughs> and it truly is. And so I'm back in a city where I love everything about it. I didn't like traffic in Nashville. I didn't like how fast it was growing for the sake of growing. And I didn't like having to drive 40 minutes to some good fishing. Yeah, I am four minutes from good fishing here. I can pick up a rod and hop on the mountain bike and go to the marina and fish. I can walk through the woods and hit the Tennessee River and fish. I can hook up the trailer and go to any number of world-class fisheries. And they're on board to help us bring some ridiculously awesome uh, sport-growing events to this area. And again, we've talked about this before, but I hate to say that because I'm telling people this is episode one, season one, so we're getting started again. We just have the ability to have big events here where you've got you're centrally located. And I've said centrally located now four times in this one podcast, but we're right in the middle of some awesome fishing. You can go in any direction, hit some cool stuff. You can have everything from swamp and lily pad fishing on Wheeler and backwaters back road stuff. You can have Rocky Bluffs on Pickwick and Wilson. You can have everything Gunnersville has to offer, which is a little bit of everything. You can go down to one of the best spotted bass lakes in the country uh, and head down to to uh, Lewis Smith Lake or Smith Lake, as a lot of people know it. You can go up to Tim's Ford right across the Tennessee River. And man, I'm just so in the middle of everything that I love to do. <sighs> I got turkeys gobbling in the field behind me awesome. in the mornings. I've got, you know, bald eagles. I've got places to go paddle just for mental cleansing. Uh, well, got it's, it's just a greenway. Just a greenway goes right by my house. Like it's I can go not, walking and running and, oh, it's yeah. just so good. It's, it's gorgeous. I, I mean, I, I drove through there a couple weeks ago and it was, I was, I was traveling around with my wife. We were enjoying the city. We were enjoying the town. I mean, they have some amazing restaurants. As a matter of fact, you know what? 
let's go to northalabama.org right now. Yeah, so I probably did a probably didn't do a great job of introducing this, but so one of the major supporters of KBF moving forward and what I do for television and all the stuff that we do is the North Alabama Mountain Lakes Association visit North Alabama or northalabama.org, which is is the same uh, entity. As you can see, when you pull up the website, uh, they're big on barbecue. And actually, before we went live, I told Randy, one of the things about not traveling as much is letting me get back into some of the things that I really enjoy. I cut up a bunch of chicken, sausage, and steak early this week, and I made some some kebabs. I made some chicken that I marinated. I got some steak that's marinating. I prepared it out for the whole week. I've got a little pit ball smoker outside. I can smoke stuff for a couple hours, store it for later. I've got some salmon in the refrigerator that I'm queued up for early this week to do a cedar plank salmon grill kind of thing. But Alabama has got a bourbon trail. They got a bass. They got a a barbecue trail. They got a mountain bike trail. They've got a, a brewery trail. I mean, they've literally got trails for pretty much anything you could be interested in. And probably some of the stuff that guys like us wouldn't be interested in, but your wife or life partner or significant other or kids would definitely be interested in it. Um, I actually had the, the opportunity to to go fish with this little girl, Charlotte, who does this thing right. on the website called Charlotte's Adventures. But the, the main reason I wanted to bring up the website is to say thanks to North Alabama for supporting us and welcoming KBF to North Alabama. But more importantly, I get to film my entire show here. So I don't have to travel around the country and kill myself like I used to. I'm still going to get to travel around the country, but I'm going to do it in something we talk about a little bit later to where it's not about filming. It's more about fellowship. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. But, man, you got everything from, like I said, from barbecue to bikes to bourbon to bass to I'm sure I'm forgetting something. They've even got like a mural trail. And a floral trail, a waterfall and, trail. I mean, you name it. Yeah, they're so, they're it, it, it's a crazy. But what they really got a good thing going on with their website is they've got this thing called Destination Passport. Right. So you can download this passport and you can use it to plan your trips. They also have some of the best planning tools. And if you're like me, if you're an old fart and you got out of the military and you retired, or you're looking for a change. Uh, They have a relocation package on their website that you can check out. So, again, guys, let's get into the show. But before we got into the show, I definitely needed to thank the folks in North Alabama for not just making this episode possible, but for really helping me revolutionize the way I create content, where I create content, and being able to relocate to really what is not only on paper, but in practicality, heaven for a guy like me. And so, yeah, man, thanks for bringing that up, Randy. Uh, guys, let's talk about the future of kayak fishing. What do you think, Randy? I'm down with it, man. I mean, we've got, there's so much stuff going on, brother. Uh, between the trail, the ambassador series, some, uh, team chip series, you're talking about even this show is going to change completely and become something new. So let's get into whatever you want to talk about. Let's, you know what, let's talk about that ambassador trail, considering we were just talking about North Alabama. All right. But real quick, before we do that, let me, let me say this. Okay. I don't want this to come across as this is some kind of 100% KBF plug. There's going to be some KBF plugging in there. And obviously with me being the founder of KBF and it's my business and all that kind of stuff, it's near and dear to my heart. And for those of you that are always asking, man, how can we support the channel? How can we do that? I don't really do Patreon or any of those other things. So the way I looked at it is I don't want you to just give me something. If you're going to support the channel, you can support the channel and get something out of it. So consider joining KBF. When you join, you get back more in gift cards to premium sponsors than you pay, and you get to become part of and help support the largest kayak fishing uh, community in the country. And that helps us with advocacy and lobbying and doing some of those things, which, by the way, we just had a win last week that I think is going to resonate, and I can't wait till we can announce it. But we've been able to have a major impact on a restriction for kayak fishing in a state. And we're this close to pulling it off permanently, but they've at least agreed to do it to bring an event there. And so it was a good compromise. I had told this state I'm not bringing an event back there. A lot of people are going to be able to figure out what I'm talking about until they remove this restriction on kayak fishing. And at least so far, they've agreed to do it for the event. And that's a step in the right direction. 
And again, that's all based on you guys supporting KBF so we can go out there and, you know, fight for our rights as anglers. But I wanted to say this, this is not a hundred percent about KBF. This is about what I think is missing from the sport of kayak fishing. The, the camaraderie has taken a big hit. There's a lot of infighting. Uh, we're a community that's a cross section of society. So society's at each other's throats. Society is big on getting triggered. There's a lot of infighting amongst different groups and factions and whatever you want to call it. And so by being a cross section of society and appealing to everybody, naturally, we're going to have some of that within our community uh, as well. But there's been some, some overt, like detrimental things that happen in kayak fishing that I think are things we need to get away from, things we need to stop responding to, stop giving those individuals a platform, uh, and then it'll go away. It's like you don't feed a fire and it'll basically burn out, you know? Right. Um, but we've got to do a better job as a sport of welcoming new anglers into the sport. Great. You know, when we all got into the sport back in the day, we were building all of our accessories out of PVC pipe and glue. Uh, I remember somebody posted the other day about a milk crate and they, somebody was like, man, that's a great idea. I, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking like, dude, that's like 25 years old. That's how we did it in the beginning. Yeah. There were no black packs or a Hobie H crates or anything. There was milk crates and, and seafood crates and office crates and things like that. Um, but then it turned almost visceral to where, older more seasoned anglers were like oh man you know, go somewhere else. you know it's like turned into this like weird you know take that crap somewhere else no that's and, and this is on the kayak bass fishing group no take that crap here this is what this place is for right and so we we got to do a better job of doing events that are welcoming to new anglers creating an environment that's welcoming to new anglers that allows anglers to feel comfortable asking basic questions i guess i shouldn't say anglers because an angler is a more experienced fisherman it allows anybody that's enthusiastic about fishing to ask questions entry level all the way up to expert and so we're going to do a a better job of moderating content towards that we're going to do a better job of creating content ourselves towards that end yep. uh, i started a little bit with like the how to launch a fishing kayak videos and how to fish certain basic rigs like carolina rig and texas rig and buzz baits and some of those things. So I'm going to put my time and my money where my mouth is, but I want to encourage you guys to do the same thing. Take an inexperienced angler fishing and it's great to take kids fishing, obviously take kids fishing, but also take your buddy who's never been fishing, fishing your next door neighbor that dude that sits next to you at church. You know, the, the person that works with you that you don't like no better way to diffuse the situation than inviting somebody to go do what it is you love. Right. Um, and so, Randy, I don't want to 100% talk about KBF because I didn't come to this conclusion with some of these ideas by focusing on KBF. I went out and I've driven around the country. I've been to 30-something states this year. I didn't get to fish in all of them, so I'm not 30 states complete on the 22-state Catch-22 Challenge. But I got to, to break bread with a lot of people. I got to put the tailgate down next to the water and just sit there and swing our feet and talk mm -hmm. yeah you know i got to and a lot of people are going to find this hard to believe but i got to listen a lot more than i talked which was which is refreshing you know for me and i just come to the realization that when i was at that big stage with flw and i just thought man this isn't what i want kayak fishing to be for me mm -hmm. and we decided not to go that route after that um, it really reaffirmed that, man, the kayak fishing is, is about the camaraderie. It's about the get together. Yeah. It's about the teams. It's about that feeling of belonging. Um, and it reminds me of the early days of 3d archery shoots. And it reminds me of the early days of like motorcycle clubs that I was exposed to when I was at uh, my early twenties and things like that. Um, and so the camaraderie, excuse me, the camaraderie part is what we need to double down on. It's what we need to focus on. And so to do that, I think we need to create events or promotions or opportunities around that. Correct. So I'm going to, I'm going to share a few ideas uh, with you guys that aren't fully developed because I think that if we can crowdsource it from the community, 
we're going to make it a lot better than me and Randy bumping our ugly nugs together and trying to figure it out all by ourselves. Um, and, and it just is better that we we make these things happen as a community, right? Um, as a family, you know, uh, for those of y'all that are watching from anything other than YouTube, my YouTube family is called the knuckleheads and it was an accident. It was one of those things where I called some, I said something about a knucklehead and somebody commented and said, I can't believe you call your fans knuckleheads. And I'm like, dude, I'm not calling my fans knuckleheads. I'm including myself in that because we're all knuckleheads because you got to be a knucklehead to follow me. Okay. First of all, <laughs> you got to be a knucklehead to paddle around in a freaking plastic boat chasing a fish that's got the size, the brain of a, the brain, the size of a BB and spend an inordinate amount of time, money, effort, and energy doing so right to me. And I don't think of knucklehead as meaning anybody stupid or an idiot or anything else. It's just a, it's a term of endearment, right? So when I say knuckleheads, for those of y'all that are watching anywhere but YouTube, it's not a derogatory term. And I are one too. So when I say knuckleheads, I mean we. So I listen, one. <laughs> I think that we need to get together and do events where everybody comes together regionally, intra-regionally, nationally in certain cases, like what we do at the national championship. But we've got to foster that concept separate from competition everything can't be about competing because right. a lot of people are intimidated by competing a lot of people feel like they don't stand a chance to compete on the national level so why go donate their money at one trail or one series event when they're not going to do the whole thing and so there's something that i've been wanting to do for a number of years and just didn't think it was possible and now i'm going to take my own advice and say everything is possible if you believe that is possible right and so I, I want to do a national demo day. And, and demo days are where you get new anglers into boats. It's where you, and I'll tell you something else. Two or three of the Gucciest places I get to fish are because I worked a demo day and a new angler came to the demo day and I helped him out, teaching them how to paddle, teaching them how to get in the boat, how to get out of the boat, like how to set the boat up for themselves, whatever. And then they invited me to go fishing. They've been lifelong friends. And so I'm not telling you that you have to do it for with them, like what's in it for me, but there is these intangible benefits from doing it that, that could weigh in. But like, I think that the, the ambassador clubs, the fishing groups, the whatever you want to call them should organize these things that we should have a day that we all decide on, or we work together to get as close to deciding on and do a national demo day where that day, everywhere you go, there's an opportunity to get in a fishing kayak. Right. You know, there's an opportunity to do it as a fundraiser for your club. You could say, hey, guys, bring your kayaks out. Mm -hmm. And everybody that brings their kayak out uh, gets a free membership or 50 percent off. But we're going to charge ten dollars per person to demo the 30 or 40 or 50 kayaks that we bring out. You can market it on social media. You can get a retail partner in your local area that gives up a prize to raffle off for everybody that comes. And then maybe a separate prize package for everybody that that brings their boats to do the demos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very simple to pull off with waivers. It's not really too litigious because that person's taking the boat themselves, but it's a great way. If you're a pro staffer, for example, it's a great way to go out and represent your brand right. and take pictures and do Instagram posts and say, Hey, Hey, uh, old town. Hey, bonafide. Hey, Hobie. Hey, new canoe. Like feel free. I got 30 people in my boat today. Right. And then I think what could end up happening is, is the manufacturers could get behind it. And then maybe the manufacturers could start providing kayaks for these demo days again, because they don't want to get kayaks to tournaments anymore because everybody there's already got one for the most right. part. So this could be a good opportunity for, for charity tie-ins and other things. But I really think we need to create a national demo day where it's like a national, kind of like the March of Dimes gets everybody out walking that day and it raises awareness. We should flood the parks, the boat ramps, the put-ins and get butts in boats and build long-term relationships. And you know what else? It's an opportunity for the people in the clubs that may only see each other's names on Facebook right. to get together and see each other face to face, check out each other's rigs, cr crisscross and demo the other boats yourself. But it, it's an organized way to do it. I think the best time of the year to do it is somewhere in June 
because that way the Northeast is thawed out. Yeah. Fishing is not only hot, but it's also somewhat tapered off for some people. So you're not asking them to give up a day of flipping to bass on beds. Uh, kids are out of school. So again, this is idea uh, diarrhea for this episode. So National Demo Day. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, guys. So comment in the comment section, both now in the chat while this is live and if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. Um, grab this and turn it into a segment and then put it out there to get other people to comment on it and tag me in it. And I'll go aggregate those ideas so we can get the best possible uh, traction for this thing. Uh, the next thing I want to do is rallies, yeah. right? And rallies are basically, for lack of a better way of putting it, for folks that have been around a long time, we used to have this thing in kite fishing called the boondoggle. And the boondoggles were awesome. There'd be three or 400 people show up to it. It was more about fellowship and fun. Uh, in one boondoggle, they got a, a, a campground and everybody was staying at the camp, same campground and everybody would pull into their camp spot, but rig their kayak out and put it out in front of their thing. And so it was almost like trick or treating. You could walk around the campground and check out all the rigs and rigging ideas and all that kind of stuff. And again, you got to meet people. Then they set up a little vendor village where, you know, I think it turned too commercialized towards the end and then it ultimately uh, disappeared. But I think you keep it basic. You don't over commercialize it. You let manufacturers come and set up a tent if they want to. Maybe they can set up a tent in a campsite instead of having some, you know, expo or some crap like that. But take it back to the basics because most of the reps for these outdoor companies do it. Like they do it, you know, mm -hmm. so they could easily just bring their rig throw up a tent in their campsite, represent their brand and break bread with the consumers and the anglers and the, and, and get down at that grassroots level in the sport. And I just think it's a good way to bring people together. So we've got commitments from Eau Claire, Wisconsin to host one. We've got a commitment from Ocean City, Maryland to host one. And then we're looking for other opportunities. We want to have them regionally so that you don't have to drive halfway across the country, especially with $5 a gallon gas. Uh, I'd like to do one in every kind of major region, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Central, North Central, Southwest, Northwest, right? Something along those lines. So I'd love to hear y'all's ideas on how to make rallies better. I'd like to do seminars. I'd like to, maybe these demo day and rallies could be combined down the road. Maybe you could have a demo day at the rallies, but it's not the national demo day. You could have a big fish competition that's just more for fun. You could have a catch a fish and you're automatically entered into a drawing, you know, for some prize package type yeah. thing. You could just fish on your own and for fun and there'd be no, you know, competition to it or any, you know, anything. It's so, just gonna be it's just gonna be a good idea just to get everybody together. Like it yes. It doesn't even matter like what we're really doing because we're gonna go out, we're gonna have fun no matter what, if we just go and hang out. Like we're we're, you know, we're past the stage of being in COVID. We're past the stages of doing all this stuff. We're now gonna get back to let's get the community back together. And that's what Boondoggle was, and that's what um the national championship was at one time, and now we're just gonna go back to having these rallies across the country that can actually be something that everybody can go to. Cause like myself, sometimes I can't make it to all the tournaments, but I want to go and hang out with everybody. I want to be there. And that's one of the biggest things is filling that. Well, door. it was actually, it was actually your event. That was one of the events where I thought, you know what? Because I was out there fishing my butt off. Right. Thinking I have a chance to win and got all excited and tenor rock is awesome and all that other stuff. And it was really one of the first times that I had got to fish that way in a long time. And I was having fun. But I remember getting back to the boat ramp. Um, I had something that I had to run back to the truck for in the middle of the day. I, oh, my battery died. Right. So I had a, I had grabbed the 23 amp hour Dakota instead of the 54. And I had been using that same 23 like three days in a row. And finally, my HDS killed it. So I ran back to the truck to grab my other battery to switch it out and head back out. And there was like eight guys at the boat ramp. They had already quit fishing. They were sitting around. One of them had a little grill. You know what I mean? <laughs> and to me, I was like, you know what? That's legit. Yeah. Like, the, the the tournament still got three hours left, two hours left, whatever it was. And these guys were already, like, just having fun and, and breaking bread and, and doing what I'm talking about. And so it could be incorporated into some of the, the competitions as well. And so to kind of move things in this direction, one of the things that we're going to do with the trail series is separate it out next year mm -hmm. from everything. We're not going to have the trail series championship 
at the national championship. We're not going to have all like, if you want to be uber competitive, you fish the trail, you want to win angler of the year, you go to the trail series championship and you win your way into the 10. And that's a completely separate thing. And that way it also takes the prestige of making it into the 10 and it doesn't downplay it by being there with the trail series or the right. national championship and all that other stuff. But it really also kind of lets us talk about what we're doing here and align things, put the super serious stuff with the super serious. You want to be a pro, you want to do the trail series thing. You want to chase that the trail series and pro series are over here. Everything else is going to have a community, you know, feel to it. Yeah. And then I think the next evolution and I kind of shoot myself in the foot for backing off of this, but we started it before COVID, way before COVID. And we were going to move into what I'm about to tell you guys right after that. But I kind of got gun shy because of COVID and because of finances and things yeah. like that. And, and I just felt like during COVID, it would have been harder to pull this off. But we started the Top Team Challenge Cup. Five, 18, 19. 19. And everybody loved it, but I made the barrier to entry too high and then I brought it down, but I still left it too high. So there's a bigger opportunity with the top team challenge cup than just the top team challenge cup at the national championship. The idea was it would take a life of its own and then we would separate it out. What we've got to do is make it take on a life of its own so we can separate it out. But I think the Top Team Challenge Cup needs to become its own thing down the road. Mm -hmm. And I think that to support that, we create a team challenge series. And instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we do it the way we've done everything. We make the team challenge series virtual first, online, four-person teams, two alternates throughout the season. That's it. Yeah. And we ultimately lead that into regional team challenge cup. Uh, qualifiers and then that ultimately leads to the the bigger you know team challenge cup but i like the team idea um this is you know another reason that i kind of slowed down a little bit is because you know greg nosar introduced kbbt scott butcher introduced five live and all of them had that teamish feel to them mm -hmm. and i didn't want to muddy the waters too much but i really think that this is an opportunity for to complement what's going on with KFL to be its own thing, but at the same time be complementary to it. Uh, low barrier to entry, entry fees, uh, payouts at each event, and maybe not even have live events until we've got enough traction with the online series. But I think the online series would be fun. So I'd love to hear you guys inputs on that. I'm thinking four person teams, best five fish over the course of the month, or maybe because it's a team challenge cup, we go up to 10 fish, you know, so it's the best 10 fish from four anglers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then as we get participation, we do regions. Now in the past, the problem with regions are, is they've been really hard to balance. Right. You know, and I'll explain that real quick. Yeah. Let's say you've got a region and you call it Northeast, but you put Michigan in it or you put Ohio in it. Well, the Michigan and Ohio guys identify better with Indiana and Illinois than they do the Northeast, right. right? Because they're on the far edge of one region. And then same thing is true pretty much anywhere you go. You put Tennessee in the Southeast and it's at the upper echelon of it. And then where's Kentucky go and all this other stuff, right? It's always problematic. People like, I don't want to compete with those guys in Tennessee's don't want to compete with the guys in Florida, Florida, Alabama don't want to compete with the guys in Texas. And so the regions are hard to do. But I sat down with the math the other day and I spent about three hours drawing little, little, little sketches. And it was a, a U.S. map of the states that I got at like uh, Staples. And three state clusters work really well because there's three or two or three states have a shared almost identity to a certain extent, but they're at least close enough proximity wise that you can create those interstate, interclub, intrastate, interclub rivalries to where the challenge series becomes regional championships, but in little three state clusters. And then that feeds a national team challenge cup, you know, right. type championship. And so I haven't developed that idea fully, but I do know that I don't want the team 
the top team challenge cup to just be at the national championship. And I think the team thing has some legs. So we're going to explore making it a challenge series to complement the state challenge series Four people, four people seems to be the magic number. Five is like that odd person out. Right. Two people can travel in a vehicle together, trailer together, roommate together, all that kind of stuff. So two teams of two seems to be really the right number that will trickle down into the college series and the high school series down the road. But I think we just develop it. So I'd love to hear everybody's feedback on the team cup concept. You know what I'm saying? Because I do feel like there's a huge opportunity there. And like, say for example, if you're already a KFL team, again, I don't know the rules for KBF that or KFL that this is restricted, but you could go fish a team challenge series as your team. You could give your sponsors more return on investment. You can give yourself more opportunity to win money along the way to fund your team's, you know, uh, viability. You can, you can vet your team a little better. And, and I think the KFL allows eight people. I think mm-hmm. the way we would do it is say it's a four person team. The two alternates. You get two substitutions throughout the course of the year. Neither of those people could have been on another team because I think KFL is kind of like more like the NFL where they allow trades and some of that other stuff. And I just don't want to get it. I, I don't think we have the level of sophistication to manage that. So I think the more we lock the teams in, and don't require you and, and, and limit moving around the easier it makes it, you know, for us and for the teams. Uh, well, so again, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on the team concept. I personally think that the team concept is even potentially better than the individual concept long-term, especially for how we think, how we act and how we move as a community in kayak fishing. Na- anglers naturally kind of group up into little groups of people, little wolf packs anyway. So let's um let's build on that. And then I also think it could be a really good feeder thing to KFL or to somebody that wants to do some really elaborate thing with the team concept. I just want to provide an opportunity for persons to fish on four person teams and create that inter team. So a lot of people don't realize this or remember this, but Back in the day, back in the early days of kayak fishing, there was a thing called kayak wars. Wars. <laughs> and I was heavily involved in kayak wars. I loved it. It was bad to the bone because, like, dude, you would get off work and somebody would call you and go, bro, I need you to go catch a speck over 24 inches because mm-hmm. it was a lot of salt water. Dude, I need you to go, hey, man, you need to lift up the team and go catch this. Or, hey, who's going to get the sheep head? And, man, our team was, like, legit. And it was fun and it motivated you to go fishing. And now I will, I will not, I will not, not say that it also stressed you the hell out sometimes because you would get your phone blown up and you're like, dude, I have fished 17 days in a row. I need to take a break, you know, or whatever. So there is that balance thing, but man, kayak wars was awesome back in the day. And I think that, 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 that the KBF team challenge series and the top team challenge cup, it's somewhere in the middle of that and KFL and other team concepts. And so, right. yeah. Um, and then last but not least, I want to announce on this podcast, since it's the foundational podcast that your boy is going to start guiding again. I am, uh, I am on waters that I fish more than anywhere else in the country. I know Gunnersville upside down, backwards and sideways. I know Wheeler, uh really well especially the backwaters where you can't really get in a boat i know lots of juicy places on pickwick and wilson and you know i will tell you this i've labored over it and the one thing that was hanging over my head is what about when people want to go fishing with me and then they want to fish kbf and so i had to kind of decide how that would look So I'm going to start guiding again. It's mostly to kind of offset the expense of living in a second place is to share the water with people is to create content is to create a formalized way for a lot of folks out there that want to go fishing to say, Hey, I can book Chad and I can go fishing. I'm going to take you out and give you an experience. But I think the way I'm going to do it is you can't fish in a KBF sanctioned event 
if you have had me as a guide within the last year, not 30, I'm going to make my rule more restrictive than the regular KBF rule. Um, and that way I, I avoid the appearance of impropriety. I don't have people calling me going, dude, I need you to show me all the good spots on Gunnersville because the national championship's coming or anything like that. And most of the guiding I'm going to do is going to be on isolated waters, rivers, creeks, things like that, which is where I really enjoy showing people that side of kayak fishing. So yeah, I'm going to start guiding again. Going to be limited. Not going to be trying to guide five days a week. Probably not even three days a week. Probably not even two days a week. Maybe one day a week. Maybe not even every week. So stay tuned for an announcement on that. But I, again, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on that. What are your thoughts on this, you know, your fat buddy Chad getting back out there and doing some guided trips again? Um, and it's also a forced way for me to put myself on the hook to stay even more active than I already am. So yeah. Yeah, man. That was a lot. I know it was a lot. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'll go back and I'll add the chapters in like I've been doing on the videos where there's little breaks where I talk, where it says what I'm talking about. So you say, what do you say about the trail series again? You don't have to scroll through the whole video. You can just go to the bar, the little slider bar, and it'll tell you where each thing is in the video. So I'll take the time to go back and watch the video and transcribe in the um, technology the chapters. Awesome. Yeah, it man. Technology so much is great. Uh, no, uh, let's. Look, I mean, you've got a lot of great comments in here already. Uh, well, let's I, take I'm, some comments, Randy. I mean, um, one of the gentlemen, uh, Taurus, wants to know he needs to find a local club to join. I want to get more serious. How did they go about finding a local club? Man, I'm going to tell you the easiest way to do it, as much as I hate to throw this out there, but we are aggregating a page on KBF. There's two really easy ways to do it. One, if you go to Fishing Chaos and you sign in and the club nearest you will be recommended to you through what's called CMS, Content Management System. So it's kind of like when you look up a business in Google, it shows you the closest ones. So that's one way of doing it. It shows you the clubs near you. And the other one is pretty straightforward. It's old Zuckerberg. You go to Facebook and you search kayak fishing in your area yeah. and you search kayak fishing groups in your area. And you're probably going to find a number of them. Most people today in America, because we have so many clubs now, are centrally located between two or more really good options when it comes to a club or group to, to, to be part of. And then there's some bigger clubs that, that cover a larger area that are doing a really good job of, of aggregating, you know, groups from multiple states or multiple pieces of states mm -hmm. like central states um you know in nebraska central states kayak fishing is uh was really that was that event that i was sitting there swinging my feet on the tailgate talking to the guys and had a good time and and all that good stuff and so um yeah facebook or go to fishing chaos and honestly you can also go to tourney x and if you go to tourney x and you scroll through the events a lot of the events have the name of the club in the name does that make sense? Um, yeah, so Tourney X has got a lot of them you can find. Uh, there, it's actually searchable. It's in alphabetical order. A lot of them have the name of the state in the in the name of the club, so that's a good one. Uh, so yeah, Tourney X, Fish and Chaos, and Facebook are probably your easiest ways to do it. Not a lot of clubs are really showing up organically on Google searches and stuff like that. But if you search, if you search Facebook, Tourney X or Fish and Chaos, you'll find it. You'll find yes. something. For sure. So you can definitely find it. It's all the matter. You just take a little bit of extra initiative in both of those, and you can find them pretty quick. Um, they also, there was a question, not a question, but a comment said, Chad, please let Rick, Rick at Monster Bass know that Indiana in the same region with Oklahoma. <laughs> he has Indiana in the same region with Oklahoma. So, again, this is a perfect example of, like, it doesn't matter what you do with the regions. And I told Rick at Monster Bass the same thing when he started putting these regions together. I'm like, dude, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. But the same thing could be like, as soon as you put Indiana over here, it's like, now you got Indiana with insert name over here. Right. You know, and I think that there's a really good way to balance it. But I think little three, maybe in some cases where you've got states like Montana or Wyoming that don't have a lot of competitors, you can make them a fourth in a, in a particular region. But I think three state regions or three state competitive little packets are the way to go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Down yeah. the road. But yeah. I'll, I'll let him know there, Gramps. And uh, actually, you probably 
get his attention on the live streams more than I even do. So I'll, but I'll, I'll let him know. They're really liking the four man team trail series. They really like that. That idea is kind of like popping really, uh, that's got a lot of people thinking real quick about like how to do that. And now, I think let it, me tell you two things that are not going to happen with that thing. First of all, I don't want to over commercialize it. Right. I want you guys to be able to sell sponsorships of yourself for the series. That doesn't mean we won't have some sponsors to help us offset the cost so we can stay 100% payout or more than 100% payout. Um, and I'm not going to piggyback it on the trail series. This is not going to be one of those deals where you muddy the water with the trail series. And so that means I may not even have live events other than the championship the first two. Oh, shoot. I'm glad somebody said something about that because I forgot. So newsflash, I am actually, I got down this road and then I got squirreled over here. Uh, I am actually going to drop the entry fee for the team, the top team challenge cup at this year's national championship from $500 to $200. So instead of $125 per angler to join, it's going to be basically $50 per angler to join. It's going to be a hundred percent payout. We're going to obviously take out PayPal, PayPal and, and any kind of, you know, cost that it actually costs us like, um, real tournament management or, you know, amortize that across the thing, but it'll be a hundred percent payout after your basic fees. Right. Um, and again, that's, that's just to say, look, it makes more sense to make it more accessible for more people. It was too late in the year to change the top team challenge cup to something right. standalone. We're also going to have the team concept at the ambassador series championship, which is what you started to ask me about earlier. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a whole separate show about the ambassador series championship. We're this close to announcing the final details. I'll give you the cliff notes version. It's going to be four people, teams, five fish, any five fish from the whole team, not one per person or any of that. It's actually the best five that anybody on the team catches. And uh, it's going to be $20,000 to the top team that represents an ambassador series club and $5,000 to the individual that catches the biggest five fish total on a two day tournament veterans day weekend. It's going to be a Friday, Saturday event so that you've got Sunday to hang around to, to fellowship, to break bread, to do whatever you want to um, drive home. Um, and that's, that's usually a three day weekend anyway for a lot of people. So, uh, deals the details on that will be released very soon but look for the update on the website probably tomorrow on the national championship sign up that the top team challenge cup is going from five hundred dollars down to that's two hundred dollars awesome. so awesome. don't go sign up yet because i looked today and there was nobody signed up yet don't make it complicated and go sign up at 500 and then i got to do a bunch of refunding just wait till tomorrow i'll have it updated and then the teams can start signing up at um, you know, and here's the other thing. Now that the national championship is wide open, all your buddies got to do to be eligible to fish the top team challenge cup is fish an event and be eligible to fish in the national championship. And then you're eligible to fish on a team. So I think that a lower entry fee, again, hundred percent payout. I'm thinking we're going to keep it simple with the top team challenge cup and basically just pay instead of trying to get complicated with paying 10%. We're just going to pay like first, second, and third, and it'll be like 40, 30, 20, or something like that. You know, 40% to first, 30%, 20%. Maybe we'll go like, you know, three places for up to 100 clubs, and then, you know, a place every 25 clubs. I'll work that out, or teams after that, but it won't be the standard 10% payout model. I want there to be a big carrot on the stick for a very little investment. If you have a hundred people at a $200 entry fee and first place is 10 grand, everybody takes home $2,500, right? And you paid $50 to get in. That's a 50 to one, 200 to one ROI <laughs> on your money. That's the kind of stuff that I want to build. So I'm glad y'all asked that question, but the, the two things I won't do is over commercialize this damn thing. I want to keep it fun. I want to keep it simple. And I want it to almost take on a life of its own where teams can do teams versus teams independent of the team right. challenge series. I'd love to have state clubs have an interstate championship. Their team goes to the challenge, the team of the other state, the challenge, the team of the other state, and you have a, th you know, a triple threat throwdown or some crazy so crap like that. You, you bring up a really good 
thought process because the KEF, Kayak Angels of Florida, this year for the next season has five stops that's team stop, a team trail. It's called the Try Hard Series. And that Try Hard Series is going to lead to whoever wins that series is the team champion. So we're kind of like... like we're kind of like gearing up anglers already to get into team fishing because I think that's kind of like the next evolution of what we're going to be doing. Instead of just solo events, we're going to be able to do team events. And those team events are going to be able to bring in the crowds, bring in the individuals, and bring in tons and tons of new anglers into the industry. So uh, if anybody wants any information about that, I can also share that with any tournament directors or anything, and we get to, we'll give you a lowdown of how it's kind of playing out. But we have five stops out of our eight stops. It's separate from our solo trail series it's our try hard series and we'll see how it rolls well randy listen man i am pumped about the future of the things that are going down i've got my mind right i'm getting the old body back right you know i I had lost 140 pounds last year i gained back about 35 during a second bout with covid and some other crap and so i think i'm back down about 12 or 15 of that so i'm still over 100 pounds total loss and i'm still feeling fantastic feeling more fantastic getting the diet back right doing the barbecue thing again i'm meal prepping uh i cut up the first day of the week i cut up like five pounds of chicken breast five pounds of sausage and five pounds of beef and just kind of cooked smoked it all in a day and then at the end of that day i prepped it in little prep containers put it in the refrigerator i just take one out do a little quick stir fry or go out and throw it on the grill for three four five minutes to get it heated back up add a little ghee butter to it bro so oh. i'll be doing some stuff like that on the new youtube channel i'm launching chad hoover outdoors so i can bring y'all some of the non-fishing red neckery that my son austin and i get into camping hunting off-road yeah so stay tuned for the uh be on the lookout for that it's not going to distract from what i'm doing here it's just going to add to it and uh i think i'll get to be a little more me on that channel because you're going to see me in some some stressful situations, some challenging situations, some, you know, I think, I real think I world. To, I need, I think I need to get you involved in a ruck and let's go do a ruck, man. Dude, I was literally, if I wasn't on my phone doing this live cast, I could show you that I am on the go ruck page on my, like my last four or five websites that I've been on. I've been actually thinking about it. I actually ordered a play carrier for hiking. And I, I want to do the, I actually ordered it from go ruck. So I want to yeah. do that dude, like straight up. All right. Well, I've got plenty to do, so we got we got some things. I'm doing one this. Friday. I want to do a I want to do a tournament called a Chuck and Rug. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there since you sucked it out of me. I want to do a deal where it's basically you got to do a ruck, and then you got to you know then you go chuck your lures. So it's basically like a, a challenge kind of a thing where you got to you got a ruck so far, then you got to paddle to the fishing spot, and then once you paddle to the fishing spot, you get your identifier, and then from there you spread out and start fishing. Oh, all right. Like an adventure fishing. We'll we'll. Sh- later all right but yeah right. that, that 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 got me fired up so as yeah. you can see there's tons of things that's going to happen and i mean they have suggestions of father-son tournaments they've had i mean there's just so many things that we can do as a community so the best thing to do is to get with your local club and start talking about some of these things and getting these things initiated in your local club so then we can start working with those local clubs to make this thing a lot bigger and better and then at the same time watch what comes down the pipe What's going on with KBF and everything that's going on in their in their tournament series and their trail series, the team series? See what's going on and how you can get involved, and then also pay attention for those rallies that's coming out. We're literally even working on the father son quote unquote thing. So it started off father son, then people said, "What about daddy daughter? What about mother son?" What? So it's actually right now sitting on my desk as the GM tournament guardian minor. So that way, it's not you don't have to be a parent even. This could be grandma. This could be uncle it could be basically one person's a guardian and one person's a minor and they fish yeah so <sighs> yes so <laughs> let's do some questions man we got about five minutes left because we need to keep this thing under an hour they like the about- chuck and ruck idea sweet i like that they, they did like the name try hard series that's actually a pretty good name for a series so uh, if you need that, Chad, I can hook you up with that one. Um, no, it's really close to something I've already been working on. So as soon as you said it, I went, ooh. ooh. <laughs> so when you guys rem- when you guys hear this new name for this new thing that comes out and it sounds phonetically similar, then, yeah. They said, fishing with a goat would be awesome. 
Are you talking about the the billy goat beard? (laughs) Well, well, besides the billy goat beard, we're talking about fishing with the greatest of all time. So go on out fishing on your guide trips. That's pretty cool. I kind of, I kind of, you know, it's, it's weird, man. I've never really done well with the like celebrity fan thing. It's because I am a kayak angler, not just like a, I don't do this to the sport, if you will. I'm, I just do it. So it's always been weird, but I appreciate when people say that. Uh, there's a hell of a lot more greater anglers than me out there. I probably couldn't finish in the top 25 with some of the competition that's out there in the world right now, but I definitely would love to teach and love to share. And, uh, you know, I'll put it to you this way. You might not go home with bass thumb, but you'll go home with your cheeks hurting and your stomach hurting because <laughs> we will laugh. You will have, will a, good have time. a good time. So. You will have a good time. No, uh, I, I mean, it has been uh, amazing to see just the progression of everything is kind of going to happen in the future, not to mention the changes with some, of the, with, the, with some of the changes on the show and the podcast and everything. So now you're going to be able to take us out on the road with you and listen while you're driving to all these events and doing certain things. And I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It, it's weird that everybody wants to listen to everything that's going on. It's crazy, man. I, I don't. And listen, here's the thing. This is an informative show. We're going to have entertaining shows. Yeah. We're going to bring on some just some funny dudes and funny dudettes and stuff like that. And just basically just have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I have a full plan to do a bourbon tasting show on Chatter for Fishing. Because I think bourbon and bass go together like peanut butter and jelly. They go together like, you know, uh, Laverne and Shirley. They go together like Biden Pizza. and inflation. You know what I'm Pizza. saying? Like, just, <laughs> uh, Stop. Oop. Sorry. <laughs> Lord, I apologize. That was not. The, that was not. Let's just move on. Sorry. No, but I mean, there, there, there's going to be so many options, and then at the same time, we're going to be bringing in companies that's going to be on the show. Um, we're just yeah, going to kick the door Industry wide open. Leaders, influencers, people that have changed the game, people from the OG crew that you don't even know about that need to be right. given their time in the light. That say this guy right here was fundamental and transformative in the sport of kayak fishing. You know what I mean? I could name five names right now that kayak fishing wouldn't be where it's at, and 75% of the sport of kayak fishing wouldn't even know who they are. That's that. sad. Yeah. So, anyway, let's do some questions if we got a couple minutes. Yeah, couple. you do. You have a question. What What else is – any more plans for the Fish Shop Catch 5? Yeah, 100%. The Fish Shop's Catch 5 is still going. Dang it, I got the shirts in there. They're starting to show up. People are starting to get their dog tags. Look, guys, the Catch-22 Challenge has kicked my butt, both physically, mentally, financially this year. But I've learned a lot, and this year was designed to be foundational. So what I will tell you about the Fish Shops Catch-5 is this. Every 22nd of the month, for the rest of the year, I'm going to do a prize giveaway for the Catch-22 Challenge. I'm going to start doing the same thing for the Catch-5. And so what I want to do is I want to do a drawing on the 5th and the 22nd of the month. That way we get two different distinct things. But the Catch 5, and I'm glad somebody asked, the Catch 5 is actually going to become a real challenge. Catching 22 is just 22 fish of any size. We're going to do things like the Catch 5 20-plus challenge, where all five fish have to be over 20 inches. We're going to do things where – it's four plus one. You got to catch four fish over 18. And then the last fish has got to be over 21. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that to shake it up. But yes, the catch five is going to be evolving. We're going to do a five for five. It's your best five fish in five days. That way it's not just 30 days because a lot of people are demoralized by the person that can fish every single day. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some five and five. You know what I mean? Um, I'm even thinking about doing some five for fives where it's five fish in five hours. The tournament cool. starts in the morning and it only lasts five hours and they will, we award some winners. Very low entry fee, very low barrier to entry, prizes provided by the manufacturers so that we don't have to take any money out and then the proceeds go to helping get veterans butts in boats. Yep. Great First idea. responders and kids and all that cause stuff too. But, you know, veterans is obviously the initial primary focus. That's awesome. Great question. Appreciate that you asking. Is, that is one. Uh, fishing with Gramps. That was a great question. Um, they said Gene Jensen and Chad need a thumb wrestle. That's going to happen next week. Gene's actually coming over here. We were actually supposed to get together tomorrow, and the next day we're both slammed. I've got to go do the uh, keynote speech at the Hall of Fame induction at Bass Pro Shop's headquarters, Springfield, Missouri. Hey, if you guys are interested in coming, I'll be at Bass Pro Shop 
this weekend, Friday evening and Saturday. I'll be the keynote speaker at the Hall of Fame induction. You can Google Legends of the Outdoors. There's tickets still available. It's a cool event. You get to meet some of the best known people in the sport of of uh, outdoor sports, not just fishing, fishing, hunting, everything outdoors. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to rock the house with the opening speech, man, and set the tone. And you know, yeah, it's gonna be fun. That's pretty cool honor, man. Good job. Congratulations yeah. to you, man. Yeah, That's I'm, awesome. I'm so humble, humble by that. I got the American Trailblazer of the year award year before last or two years before that COVID we didn't do anything. And then I got inducted myself into the hall of fame last year. And then it was a big honor to be asked to come back and be the keynote speaker for keynote speaker for this year's class. And so, man, you know, I pinch myself sometimes with how blessed I am in this life and in this world. It's so, awesome. and then, you know what? It's awesome because at the same time, it's because of all the people as part of the KBF is that exactly where you're at right now. And so, Thank you to everybody for doing that. And then Chad putting in, laying in all the groundwork and the, the many hours and stressful nights. But you know what? Now we're going to move forward. And we're going to have some fun. Man, it's 100% a we thing, not a me thing. I exactly. promise you, bro. Like, I promise you. So, yep. Well, any, uh, any other questions? I think we no, can do man. one more. I mean, there, there, there's just so much stuff going on that I still think a lot of everybody's still catching up. So they're waiting for you to put the chapters in there on YouTube, and then they're going to catch well, up on I can't do that until it's after it's over. I got to go back in and, and type it all out. So got to do that. But no, I mean, uh, this has been very informative, exciting to see what the future is going to be with all the different things. And whenever you could take a look into the future and see things, it should encourage everybody else and some new people to get involved. All right. Last thing before you roll that commercial to take us out of here, Randy, I want you guys to chime in in the chat and in the comment section, wherever you're watching. Let me know some podcast guests you'd like to see. Let me know some podcast topics you'd like to see. Let me know if you want giveaways and that kind of thing to be part of it. If you're more interested in the content, the discussion, and that piece of it, because I don't know how to do a podcast, so we're kind of winging it here. But we've been working on this show now for about 20, 30 shows. We've got it dialed in. Now we're going to roll into the world of making it official. Welcome to the Chat Over Fishing Podcast <laughs> with my host, Randy newton and uh we're gonna have some fun man there might be 10 of us on this show sometimes you know what i'm saying like it, it could be some round table discussions it could be some redneckery but i'd love to hear your thoughts on future guests topics <laughs> you don't want to know the guests pod- some of the names are coming in here right now dennis podcast rodman. ideas you know dennis I mean? rodman that would be dennis, hilarious I, I i don't think you know i know somebody's gonna put joe rogan i don't think i can get joe rogan on uh, well i know i can't get joe rogan i could actually probably get dennis rodman it would be hilarious. I'm I, uh, it, it's a long story on how <laughs> I could get Dennis Rodman, uh, but I met him on a layover. We hit it off at an airport one time. We started talking. We started drinking, exchanged cell phone numbers. I, and he fishes. He I does could fish. probably get him on here. You He's know actually saying? a really good fisherman, so that would be yeah. awesome. But, again, thank you again, sir. I know I want to get you some rest, get you some relaxation, and get ready to start cooking up some more of that amazing barbecue that you've been thinking of in that brain. So I got some right over there, baby. So everybody join us next week as it's going to be the second episode of the new season for the podcast. And you never know what you're going to get now when you watch this or hear this. Man, stay tuned. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. Give them a shout out, sir. And fun. <laughs> See you all in the next one. Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover with Kayak Bass Fishing. If you're looking to get in on the exciting sport of kayak fishing yourself, check out kayakbassfishing.com. Yeah! Boom! Oh, yes! What a freaking toad. So whether you want to find out more about competitive kayak fishing and kayak fishing tournaments, or just looking to learn more to make yourself a better angler, head over to kayakbassfishing.com and join today.